Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos, I'm King Nido and we're coming to you today from Ula Ula Island as the Steel type macros have been on a massive rise this season dominating their opposition but the Medaliathers are here with their talons bared looking to unleash on this metallic side so let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win this matchup, will it be the Steel types, will it be the Flying types, let's go! Now the Medaliators have been expected to have a big season, but it has not gotten off to the start they expect, but they are starting with Dragonite and Mandibuzz, and it will be Lucario and Reverum starting out for the Ulu Ulu Macros, and Lucario with the speed control immediately goes for the super effective Ice Punch on Mandibuzz. I have to think it should have gone for Dragonite, but it is the Gust follow-up from Reverum, and usually the Aethers are quicker than the Macros, but they have two of their speedier Pokemon on the Steel-type side, as that Thunderbolt does massive damage to Lucario and it is followed up by the Sparkling Aria which is not very effective on Dragonite thankfully from Mandibuzz Lucario is going to go with the Seismic Toss that consistent damage Reverend follows it up with the Electro Ball capitalizing on that Flying type but that Dragon typing prevents it from being super effective and Dragonite with the Earth Power Lucario got Dragonite's attention and Lucario has been eliminated for it this is the start the Medaliathers need as the Aerial Ace follow up from Mandibuzz is not very effective there. On to River Room now, as out comes Sandy Shocks, who has been having a great season so far, as the Terrastal dropped in for the Ula Ula Macros, and it is gonna wanna repeat that here again today against the Medali Aethers, with that very impressive spinning crown that it has on its head, and it does still keep that speed control for the Macros. Going with the Powder Snow, this is gonna be quad super effective, on Dragonite gets the elimination and the critical hit for good measure and it also does damage to Mandibuzz at the same time River Room with the follow-up goes for the nuzzle this will be super effective does not get the elimination but it will leave that paralysis status condition on Mandibuzz and also puts it in knockout range now Mandibuzz was successful in shaking off that paralysis going with the power split here on River Room sharing the power there between River Room and Mandibuzz as out comes Gyarados for the Medaliators with that intimidate ability it is going to lower the physical attack of the two steel types on the side of the field at the moment as the dark pulse here from sandy shocks gets a good connection there on gyarados river room follows it up with the smog but that is avoided by gyarados and this allows gyarados to go for its first move the force palm onto river room gets a really good connection and leaves it with that paralysis now it wasn't super effective due to that poison typing but mandibuzz yet again shakes off its paralysis with the grass pledge not very effective though on Sandy Shock, so it is able to respond with the curse. And you got to think, normally it does have that ground typing, so maybe Mandibuzz was confused, but there is that speed being lowered of Sandy Shocks to boost that physical attack and physical defense. Gyarados now quicker than River Room goes for the Psy Shield Bash. Very little damage being done to Sandy Shocks, but Gyarados does get the physical defense boost as River Room with the quick attack on Mandibuzz still doesn't get enough damage done to eliminate Mandibuzz and this allows Mandibuzz to respond with the Bolt Strike and it goes for River Room and gets the elimination in response that is exactly what Mandibuzz needed to do this puts the Medaliators back in front with that 5-4 advantage as out comes in Polyon for the Ulu Ulu Macros Gyarados speed control with the liquidation this is going to be resisted by Polyon who is a part water type but still takes some decent damage the pain split here from Sandy Shocks on to Gyarados, thankfully it didn't go for Mandibuzz because there wasn't much pain to be shared between Gyarados and Sandy Shocks, but the Volt Tackle now from Empoleon is going to get the easy elimination of Mandibuzz, immediately leveling the playing field. A close matchup so far with four Pokemon remaining on both sides, and there is Empoleon getting the recoil damage as out comes Corviknight making its debut for the Medallia Aethers. It did get that Rowan Award last season, and that is why it's in its shiny form, and it was a part of the Steel-type team last season as well as that fails from Gyarados. Corviknight though is going to follow up as now the Aethers have the speed control. That stored power not very effective there. On to Empoleon who is going to respond with the Hyper Voice doing damage to both flying types. Not very effective though. On Corviknight and the Morning Sun from Sandy Shocks who is now the slowest Pokemon on the field. It is going to get itself back to full strength. And Gyarados now with the Weather Ball onto Empoleon. This is going to be resisted. There is no weather to capitalize on, but Corviknight is looking to follow up 
with the shelter so it is going to boost those physical defenses that's already base 105 getting a really good boost there as Empoleon responds with the cosmic power going for a stat boost of its own of its own physical defense and its special defense as well which is base 101 sandy shocks with the draining kiss trying to take some of that health from Gyarados who would normally restore its own but it's back at full strength there's the body slam from Gyarados on two sandy shocks not very effective Corviknight Though it is going to go for the nasty plot, still focusing in on the stats. It is going to boost its special attack a great deal, as Empoleon is going to go for the flail. Very little damage there being done to Gyarados. Sandy Shock, though, so with the Lumina Crash. And Gyarados is eliminated. The Ululu Macros have just taken the lead in this matchup, as now out comes Salamence. Another intimidating Pokemon, so another physical attack drop for the Steel Tips. But with that competitive hidden ability, Empoleon does get a special attack boost. However, Salamence does have speed control going with the Dragon Hammer on to Empoleon. It is not very effective. Gets an okay hit though. And Corviknight follows it up with the attack order. Yet again, not very effective, but still chipping away at Empoleon here as Sandy Shocks with the Mud Slap. This will not work. The Flying Types are immune to ground type moves. And now Empoleon is setting up a rollout. This is super effective on two Salamence, getting the critical hit as well, and this will get stronger with every turn as the shore up now from Salamence, it is gonna restore itself back to full strength. Have to wonder if it goes for the rollout again in Poland, will it do more damage than what it did with the critical hit as the guard swap here from Corviknight onto Empoleon, switching all their changes to their defense and special defense. Empoleon following up with that rollout, not doing as much damage as when it was the critical hit on Salamence, still gets a good hit though as the guard split now from Sandy Shocks to Corviknight sharing that guard between each other and now Salamence with the Dragon Darts going for both Steel Types, not getting a great hit there onto Empoleon or Sandy Shocks thanks to them resisting that but Corviknight now with the sunny day on the field. And as that sunlight turns harsh, that protosynthesis ability of Sandy Shocks does get activated, heightening its special attack. So this actually helps the Ulula Macros as that rollout continues onto Salamence. It's able to hold on, it's in knockout range. And the flamethrower follow up from the Sandy Shock saying thank you to Corviknight. And it takes it out of this matchup with a massive connection. It should not have set up that sunny day as out comes Gliscor. And the close combat from Salamence is super effective on Empoleon. Gets the elimination and cuts that rollout from continuing. Salamence does lower its physical and special defense to do so. Though as it is an easy target, we get the Vault Tackle from Gliscor on to Sandy Shocks, gets a good connection, and it is going to leave Sandy Shocks with that paralysis yet again, slowing it down, but potentially making it unable to move. There is some recoil damage for Gliscor, but Sandy Shocks shakes off the paralysis, goes for the water spout. This will connect with both Gliscor, super effective, and getting that enough damage, not very effective, but effective enough to get the elimination of Salamence. Gliscor is all by itself with three steel types to contend with as out comes King Gambit with that pressure ability. Gliscor is surely feeling the pressure. It goes for the Night Slash. It's not going to be very effective there. On to King Gambit, who is going to respond by setting up the spikes. This wouldn't have even mattered if it set it up at the start of the match because the flying types would never have landed in the, unless the gravity was in effect. But Sandy Shocks with the heal pulse is actually going to restore the health of Gliscor back to full strength. Sandy Shocks clearly wanted a full strength opponent here. Gets the eerie impulse in response from Gliscor. That is going to lower that special attack that is currently boosted of Sandy Shocks. King Gambit with the infestation does very little, not very effective damage to Gliscor, but, but being afflicted. So with that infestation, it is going to do passive damage. Sandy Shocks unable to move due to its paralysis, and there is that infestation, that terrifying noise as it chips away at Gliscor, who is going to go with the synthesis, once again restoring itself back to full strength. And it's great that it's at full strength, but it does need to go on the offensive. It has that ground typing advantage over the steel types, as King Gambit does fling its leopard berry at Gliscor. Very little damage. Gliscor practically just caught it in its grasp and proceeded to eat it as the Fickle Beam follow up from Sandy Shocks, trying to capitalize on that part ground typing of Gliscor as the harsh sunlight does fade, wearing off that protosynthesis of Sandy Shocks. As again, that chilling noise from the infestation doing damage 
to Glyscore, who is going to go for the Aromatic Miss, but it unfortunately does fail. This allows King Gambit to try and capitalize. It goes and sets up more entry hazards, this time the Toxic Spikes, and yet again, no one's coming out onto the field, but it wouldn't have mattered in the first place, so they are just toying with Glyscore here. As the Wild Bolt Storm from Sandy Shock would normally be super effective on a flying type, but due to it being done to Glyscore, it is immune thanks to its ground typing. And there is Sandy Shocks having to chow down on its Leopard Berry to restore some PP. It has been in the matchup this long as Glyscore with the Morning Sun once again restoring its health. This is great that it's got its priorities on having full strength, but it needs to still go on the offensive. The Endeavor from King Gambit will not affect Glyscore. And this is where Sandy Shocks needs to go for its part. Goes with the Growl, but the Hyper Cutter ability of Glyscore prevents it from having its attack stat load. And there is that Infestation still doing passive damage. Glyscore needs to go on the offensive though. Goes for the Crunch, but this is going to do very minimal damage. It's not very effective on King Gabbit, who does respond with the Grass Pledge. Once again, trying to capitalize on that ground type. And Sandy Shocks is going to follow up with the Metal Sound now onto Glyscore. This is going to cut into that special defense a great deal as Glasgow is finally freed from its infestation. It goes with the bitter malice focusing in on King Gambit once again with not very effective damage, but it does level that physical attack that is base 135 as King Gambit with the Cotton Spore is going to lower that speed a great deal of Glasgow. Sandy Shocks follows it up with the takedown. It is going to get some recoil damage. It gets an okay bit of chip damage though onto Glyscore. And now King Gambit is the quickest on the field, goes for the Vault Tackle, but yet again it will not affect the ground type Glyscore, this allows Glyscore to go with the Rising Voltage, going for its own Electric type move, chipping away there at King Gambit, and Sandy Shocks is unable to move now due to its Paralysis here, as King Gambit tries to do its bit, it goes with the Tackle, chipping away yet again at Glyscore, it needs to go for some big moves, maybe an Earthquake to try and take out both of these Steel types, it goes with the Confide instead, lowering the Special Attack of King Gambit, this allows Sandy Shocks to go with the Amnesia, it's going to boost its defense here on the field. Sorry, it's special defense a great deal. As King Gambit with the Super Fang, this is going to cut the remaining health of Glyscore in half, putting it in knockout range. Glyscore with the Teeter Dance, it's going to leave its opponents confused. They're probably confused because why is Glyscore not trying harder? It is just toying with them, but it is at a 1-3 disadvantage. The Aethers must be screaming at Glyscore to do something, anything. Sandy Shocks needs to shake off this confusion. And it is successful in doing so. It goes with the bullet seed once again, trying to capitalize on that ground type. And we get a time warning. Maybe Glyscore wants it to go into overtime. It needs to hold on. There are only two bullet seeds in that multi hit move. Glyscore is still in it. Now King Gambit needs to shake off its confusion to try and get this elimination. It is successful. It's going to go for the mud slap. But again, now it's immune to that ground type move. And Glyscore is going to go with the final Gambit after all of this. It does that not very effective damage? to King Gambit, but it takes itself out of the matchup, and the Ula Ula Macros have won this, frankly, baffling match. What were the Medaliathers doing in this match? Glasgow was just having fun. They need to take this more seriously, especially as next round they will be going up against the Mahogany Explorers, who are still on a winning streak. Whereas the Steel Types are tied for first and next round, they will be going up against the Vile Stone Breakers. But until then, Nidorinas, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. And if you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe. But more importantly, always remember, you are awesome. And I'll see you when you see me.